This is the House of Hockey podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. Hockey is more than a game, it's a lifestyle. It's you, the diehard supportive fans, your favorite players who are on the team you cheer for and the organization who supports them. The companies that make your gear, bags, and beer league sweaters, the hockey moms and hockey dads, and everything else that makes this House of Hockey your home. Come on in, I'm Breezy. And I'm Ray Ray. And And this this is is our house. house. Welcome to the House of Hockey Podcast, episode 103. I'm Bray Ray. <laughs> I'm Breezy. Okay, go. We'll tell everybody about our incredible guests in a second, but Breezy has to tell us all about the incredible experience she had at the Stadium Series in Nashville. Go. Yeah, so last week, uh, that little voice clip, I I didn't even, I wasn't even in the right state of mind. I was running around like crazy doing all this weird, fun stuff, and I was trying to get something over to Ray. I didn't even know what I was talking about. But I just thought of Pekka Rene throwing the freaking catfish before the game. The entire place lost their mind. <laughs> it was insane. Absolutely insane. That it was me up. hilarious. And so, like, I did not think he was doing, like, I didn't know what he was doing. And then when he, like, almost came like this and then grabbed it and was like, yeah. <laughs> He seems like so um, sort of like innocent in his expressions. Like he like is very genuine, I think, is how he comes across and like very unfiltered and was just like, this is so cool. I'm holding a fish. And then like when he threw it and he like whatever, he like hit somebody or like it went further than he thought. I mean, what what happened? Because we didn't see the the flip of that clip when he threw the fish on the ice. And then it was like like went further. And I I don't I was sitting in like a weird angle where it was like I was almost sitting too low because you couldn't really see the ice very well. Like I, I sent you a couple mm-hmm. pictures and it was like, you couldn't see, it, it was just a weird angle. So I had a hard time seeing like where it ended up, but I think it ended up getting someone. He was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But it was, it was awesome. It was, um, gosh, I don't know. That hyped me up. That was like the highlight of my night. I think it was <laughs> insane. He was, wearing, he was wearing like that leather jacket. Cause they got him a leather yes. jacket to like goat on it. And all of his stats on like one of the, the sleeves, I think, or the back. I think it was on the back of his stats. But you saw him just walking out of the locker room, like all like GQ style. And I was just like, oh my God. And he was walking. I don't know if it was on TV. Walking around and there's a bunch of kids that were um, like really far down on like the barricade. And he was like throwing pucks to them and like waving to people. And it was just, I don't know, super genuine, like you said. But um, gosh, it was Pekka's weekend for sure. Oh my God. Yeah. It, just seeing him like the whole, what a weekend for him. What a great time to retire his number and the whole thing. Okay. So overall review, we got a little bit from you last week of, um, wait, uh, wait, hold on. I want to, I want to talk about our guests first really quick. And then, cause we have a couple of the things we have to talk about. Yeah. Um, but I want everybody to know we have an, two incredible guests for you this week Pete and Debbie Dumoulin. They are the very proud parents of NHL Pittsburgh Penguin Brian Dumoulin. He is a hometown hero here in Maine. He's from Maine. And um, you'll hear the story <laughs> in the interview of how I met them. And basically, very was non-traditional. like non-traditional. Very non-traditional. Very not yeah. on brand for you. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, And was really like, you guys really have to come on our podcast. Like, we would really love to hear the parents perspective and, and hear your experience of, of raising what is now an L he's an NHL, you know, star. He's like, a he's a he's big time Brian and their whole experience with the cups and the cup parties and you know taking him to uh practice and travel leagues and all this kind of stuff it was I think it was so interesting and so nice to hear um from them and plus they're like so fun and so funny they are and so nice so yeah (laughs) oh yeah you're really gonna like 
uh, listening to their experience uh, being parents of an NHLer. I mean, I just think that's so interesting to hear. So yeah. they uh, that they're coming up. Okay, back to Nashville. Yes. Okay, do, I have a lot of rapid fire questions. Go for did it. you did you see any celebrities in the wild? No. Did you see Carrie Underwood? No. <laughs> did you go out on Broadway? No. I didn't. Did you wear did you buy another giant cowboy foam hat and wear it? I did not. Wow, I'm just really boring. <laughs> what did you wear to the game? I wore my original Roman Yossi jersey. Um I had to layer up and yeah. uh that was pretty much it. How I mean, cold were you? Very cold. I uh, I was sitting there and I was like, wow, I think I regret wanting to go to a winter classic game. It got down to 33 degrees. I could not feel my toes. Uh, I had double socks on. I had 32 degree under pants and under shirt on. Um, maybe if I was like more prepared, maybe I should have wore like heavier shoes um, maybe like a thicker jacket, but you, you got to show off your Jersey. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, maybe if I was just dressed more appropriately, it would change it. Um, but it was very cold. Um, the entire trip is actually very cold and everyone around us, the guy next to me, he was like shaking. I was like, do you want a hand warmer? He's like, no, I have gloves, but then he didn't put his gloves on. So fans were sitting next to you. Uh, all Preds fans. And there were some lightnings fans, um, a couple rows up and over to the side. So nice. Everyone was so nice. Um, have nothing but good things to say in my section, at least. And everyone that like I had walked past, I accidentally ran into a lighting fan. I was like, I'm so sorry. He's like, I'm so sorry. Like they were so nice. It was good. Yeah. Have nothing but good things there. Um, did the musicians sing live? Yes, they did. Who was your favorite of all the country music stars who performed everything from the anthem to like everything? Who was your favorite? Ooh, um, gosh, that anthem was awesome. Jesse James Decker did insane. Everyone around me was like, get it, girl, get it, girl. She did an incredible job. Um, all of them were really good. I think Dustin Lynch was cool, but he, they was too far away, like, um, Miranda Lambert's stage was closest to me, so I saw her mostly, but her and Dirks, I think, took the cake on, on what they had done, but, uh, there's a lot of other ones. The only person I didn't see perform live who did something was Walker Hayes. They just had him up on, like, the big screen because he did something earlier, but everybody else, uh, saw him live, and it was awesome. Oh, did you Martin's go to your bar barbecue place? Yes, Martin's Barbecue, yes. We went twice. <laughs> Um, what did you eat at the game? I didn't eat anything at the game. See, boring again. Um, it's okay. it was a little cold. I didn't even drink anything. It was cold. I didn't want it to keep getting up to go to the bathroom. Once I start drinking, I always break the seal. I always have to go. And I was like sitting in the middle of the row. It was, I just wanted to stay, like sit there under my blanket. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't eat anything. What was your dad's experience? He'd never been to Nashville, right? Never been to Nashville, never what been was... to a Preds game. Uh, he said Preds fans are insane. It was the coolest experience he has ever had. Keep in mind, my dad has worked with movie stars, celebrities, Dolly Parton, Reba McIntyre. Like he's worked with anybody you could possibly think of, uh, has had insane experiences. And this was, you know, took the cake for him. The overall stadium series, like I had said, was awesome. I don't think... I, gosh, I don't know. I mean, it was just the whole entire thing was so cool. So well put on, it was organized. Like it was great from my experience. Um, my dad said Preds fans are insane. Lightning's fans were nice and like, he had no complaints other than it got a little cold and he wants to just experience it at Bridgestone, but he loved it. Mm -hmm. He loved Nashville and that's all you can ask for. Yep. Yep. And um, you went to a distillery. I did. Yeah. Where'd you go? A uh, give us a review. A, B, yeah. C, D. 
Uh, Leapers Fork Distillery. So it's actually came over from Ireland. Uh, they do a bunch of whiskey. Um, it was pretty cool. It's out in the middle of nowhere. It took us, so it's 30 minutes. So it's technically in Franklin, but like outside of Franklin. It was really cool. I got, um, it was kind of expensive, but I got a bottle of bourbon. I, I like mm-hmm. bourbon. And I got bourbon barrel maple syrup, which was freaking good. Um, overall, it was awesome. I didn't get to do any tasting there. I just kind of went and ex- like explored a little area, but um, it was cool. I enjoyed it. I highly recommend going to uh, Leaper's Fork. Uh, cool little town, huge houses. Uh, Keith Urban, I believe, is a former residence there. Uh, Justin Timberlake also lives there, I believe. So, yeah, cool stuff. Okay, what else did we leave out from your trip? That's it. What else did you do? Um, I did a lot of Civil War stuff. So, like, we went to, like, the houses. That's, like, my favorite thing to do. So, I did pull the trigger at the game. (gasps) I did buy a jersey. And I got to say, we went into the store, the first store that we saw, right? And I immediately walked straight over to the jerseys. So I was like, oh, I want to see what they're going for. And there was a girl that was standing there trying to get a jersey down. And it was up top because, of course, they put all the USC jerseys up at the top. And she's sitting there and she's struggling. And so I just kind of pulled one off the thing. I was looking at it and I said, oh, this is how much they are to my mom. And the girl goes, but you can get them cheaper if you use your uh, season ticket member thing. And I went, oh, okay. She goes, are you a season ticket member? I said, no, I wish. She goes, just use mine. So she took a screenshot of her thing and had me text it to myself. And she goes, don't worry about it. Just use it anytime you need it. Blah, blah, blah. So nice. Whoa. But they didn't accept discounts that night. So she had texted me. And said, they're not using discounts. Um, so sorry. But anytime you go to a home game or if you go to any other game or if you want to buy online, just use my season ticket. They call it, uh, she called it something, but uh, so nice. Like, so come nice. On. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know what her name is. I just wanted to kind of shout her out if she ever happens to stumble across this. I appreciated it. I thought it was so nice of her and it really, I think it just added to the experience. Oh yeah. Whose jersey did you get? Yossi? Of course. I was looking for a Tangino one, but they didn't have any. They actually had signed jerseys there. $300 for a signed jersey. I thought that was insanely cheap. That's Um, really cheap because like a jersey is like three hundred dollars to begin with kind of but i think that goes back to the preds and i've talked about it before we talked about it with uh with colby that i think the preds organization makes things very accessible for fans and they don't charge an arm and a leg for certain things because i think that they realize that certain fans can't afford it but they they should be able to deserve to get certain things and i think making things accessible um, it's something that they do really well and they weren't behind glass shelves. Like you can go up and you can grab the Jersey and flip through them and do whatever you want to do. Wow. Hucks, everything was there. And so, um, I thought that was really cool. I didn't get a, a signed one. I personally don't want a signed stadium series Jersey. I want my normal Jersey signed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought that was really interesting as well. Very cool. And is yeah. that the Jersey? No, you said you wear your original Jersey. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I think that's, yeah, and that's like a good keepsake, what you bought. Like, that's a good souvenir to have from your whole experience there. I think that's Definitely. the way to go. Yeah. And I wore it last night for when they played against the Sharks. And let's just say they beat the that's Sharks 8 to 0. So, so uh, crazy. I'm going to hold on to this um, and keep it out. I'm not going to frame it or anything like that for the time being. Um, and I'm going to test its luck a little, a few more times. <laughs> so. Yeah, you can't, don't wash it. Oh, no, definitely not washing it. Got to wear the same outfit. Yeah. Um, speaking of the Tampa Bay Lightning, whom the Predators played while you were there, did you see that Stammer's son finally got to drive a Zamboni? Did he? 
He did. And he's like on there with a helmet and it's the cutest thing you've ever seen. Um, Carter is his name. And if you don't want to know what I'm talking about, when Stammer was at the All-Star Game in Vegas and doing press, he had his son with him. And his son was like, I won Drive Zamboni. I won Drive Zamboni, like over and over. And he had to like get up and take his son to go see the Zamboni, who's like two. Um, and he finally got to ride the Zamboni. I won Ride Zamboni, please. It was the all he kept saying to his dad, which is like the cutest thing ever. Um, and of course, uh, the lightning made his dreams come true. And uh, he got to also ride it with Griffin Perry, uh, who is Corey Perry's son. And of course, the team mascot was there to supervise Thunderbug. But uh, so stinking cute. That's awesome. I love seeing that. And a couple other memorable things happened. This happened. I just went back to Chicago for a minute. Uh, Rick Nash's uh, number 61 was officially retired by the Columbus Blue Jackets on Saturday. And it's the first jersey number sent to the rafters of Nationwide Arena in their 21 season history. So similar to Pekka and... Um, A great quote from Nash was that he said, this banner doesn't represent what I did. It represents what we did. I am so humbled. Super cool. That's so like such an an honor when those things happen and so hard to put into words. There was also a video tribute um, shown that had congratulations from Sidney Crosby. Um, uh, which I guess in this article, it says the Penguins rival had his words drowned out by booze, which, you know, that's how hockey players roll, hockey fans roll. Uh, Gretzky was in there. Corey Perry, Joe Thornton said something. And he was also given a custom blue jacket uh, lined with more than 40 images of his career highlights, his family and the legacy he has built in Columbus. How cool is that? That's so cool. Very awesome. Um, Oh, and the ownership gave him an invitation to play at the Augusta National Golf Club site of the Masters for all you golf people and a customized golf cart. What a gift. Wait, they like went all out for him. Yeah, I mean, gosh, face of the franchise, you got to do it, right? Mm hmm. Got to do it. And then did you see the Chicago Blackhawks? They, um, like welcomed back like as part of the legacy night series that they do for Nicholas Jarmelson and he dropped the ceremonial puck and they just so they did it on the night that Duncan Keith who is no longer Blackhawk and plays for the Oilers uh was in town in Chicago and Taze and Keith faced off and they pretended to fight like they were gonna fight but they didn't and then they like you know had like a little bit of a hug, which I think is acceptable. I know on a spit and chicklets that uh, they don't like what they call like tummy sticks, like tummy, like when other, like your old friend is on a rival team and like in warmies, you're not supposed to be like, hey man, how's it going? Like, how? yeah, yeah. You know, you're supposed to be like in it. But I think in this scenario with like the puck drop moments, and Jarmelson being part of, you know, that dynasty and Keith being there and Taze and I like the way they played it where they were like gonna go toe to toe but you know they didn't I thought I I enjoyed it it put a big smile on my face but I'm sure other people have other opinions oh what anything with the Blackhawks always put a little smile well not anything but a lot of things (laughs) not a lot I would say very few things lately from them put a smile on my face but you know I don't know I don't know. I just hope we get to keep flurry. That's all I know. But anyway, that's uh, that's what I've been seeing around the league. Let's send it over to the Dumoulins. This week's episode of the House of Hockey podcast is brought to you by 
The NHL season has been packed with dirty dangles, hat tricks, and big wins. As the action rolls on, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, has your shot to win big too. New customers can bet just $1 on any team and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's right, a bump in the win column for your team means free bets for you. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you still have a shot to light the lamp. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Hockey Contests. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code THPN. That's THPN for the Hockey Podcast Network. Bet just $1 on any NHL team and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's promo code THPN at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. 21 and over. Restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Welcome to the House of Hockey podcast. Pete and Deb Dumoulin, they are the parents of NHLer Brian Dumoulin, who plays currently for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. So I think we should start by telling everybody how we met because... (laughs) I am such a, I'm just a chatter person and like I see anything hockey anywhere and I start a conversation and we were at a mutual friend's surprise birthday party. We happened to be sitting at the same table and and you guys were in your Penguins gear and so I was like, (laughs) how did two Penguins fans end up in Maine? And that's when you told me your son plays. And I was like, oh, you're the Dumoulins because you guys are a really big deal here and everybody <laughs> knows you, but you are. And um, because everybody talks, everybody who I've talked to who lives in where we are, they're like, oh, you like hockey? Well, you must know who Brian Dumoulin is because he brought the <laughs> cup here. And like, you're a really big deal. You guys are. It's a big deal. I mean, he's the first um nhler to from maine to win a stanley cup and two now right yeah, yeah. that's what we're told yeah yeah i mean that's got to be incredible what's that like that, for you guys here do a lot of people do what i did <laughs> <laughs> well it does and i have to tell them i don't wear this stuff to piss bruins fans off it's just you know it comes up and uh well you have to say that brian's been a penguin for 10 years now and that's i mean if he get if he changes teams we need to get all new clothes because <laughs> both of our clothes are i mean after 10 years it's all penguin stuff you know you don't even know it but you buy another j- shirt another one so yeah, you know whole closet his whole closet especially all the boss so, college yeah. that's moved on but yeah we're very lucky very fortunate it just all these things worked right along the way to be in our situation and uh we're enjoying every day to be honest with you didn't like the loss the other night, but that goes with the territory. If it makes you feel better, Ray uh, is pretty notorious for just approaching people uh, very, very quickly. <laughs> well, and- she, she was sitting right across the table and says, how do, how do Penguins fans get here? <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, but it's true. You know, this is Boston. I mean, this is Bruins territory, maybe a dabble of Canadians over here, but, uh, you know, yeah. it's not quite common. And uh, <laughs> I just I just loved it. And you guys were so gracious to um, tell me stories and chat with me and not just be like, oh, here's another crazy hockey fan talking to me. So I appreciate it. No, we appreciate just be having that opportunity, to be honest with you. So thankful and to engage other other people into the reality of what we're going through is fun. And I think they enjoy it. And so yeah. we try to tell them what we can. So tell us yeah. what you can. Yeah. About your yeah, current because- hockey reality. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we didn't have anyone before us, you know what I mean? So we we just went into all this really blindly. Right. And we're very lucky. <laughs> so, yeah. But, I yeah. Mean, so, I mean, we love to, you know, share whatever insights we could with other parents or um, not, that, uh, you know, because because we didn't have anyone that we knew to follow. We, no one we could call. You know what I mean? So, 
Right. And when you got into the whole, you know, Brian wanting to, to play, was it kind of like a research project on trying to figure out like what steps you had to take in order to get him to be performing and playing to, to be on the right track, to be a professional? Yeah. Professionals. It was just one step at a time, really. When, when he was young, you know, Debbie got him skating to, burn off energy, obviously. And one thing led to another where he just played and he really loved it. And you could tell he loved it. And then we just kept guessing what to do from there. It's not like we ever really knew. No, we had no grand that right plan that at now. all. We had, oh, look, he's seven. He's going to be in NHL. And no, we bought him an NHL uniform because that's what we all do. You know, <laughs> and it was more like, you know. I was a lot a, of good, a lot. We were very lucky. And you know, we had a lot of good coaches just along the way that just kept getting him to the next level to the next level. And we were always shocked, you know, even when he got to Boston college, you know, the year before we like, we didn't know, you know, we were, there was no one saying, Oh, he's an automatic. It was just, he's just like him. That there wasn't enough people to compare him to that. We could really know anything, you know, and he always had other great players to play with too. So he fit in on those teams. He wasn't like, you know, you know, yes. Like a non-traditional journey for him to the NHL, it seems I, like. I, I, I yeah, guess, I you know, so. a little non-traditional, but, you know, when I talk to the dads about how all their kids made it to, the, the, the stories are very similar, you know? Not many of them at 10 years old knew they were going to be an NHL player. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. That but we true. were blessed with good, great coaches and great yeah. teammates and, um, you know, a team that made it to the, um, what was, you know, when Brian was a youngster with Casey and all that, um, what did they make Oh, it the to? Nationals. Like the, the Nationals, U-12 yeah. Nationals, and then we got spanked when we went out there because they had those Honey Bake and all those other guys. They had teams of Brian's, you know, and but we're a little team from Maine and New Hampshire, and that's where she had made it. And Casey DeSmith, the uh, <clears throat> go, backup goalie for uh, the Penguins. Him and Brian played together for, like, 10 years, it came from Rochester, New, Hit, New Hampshire, from the time they're like 10 years old till 16, so six years. And that, that little team produced three NHL hockey players. Wow. So, I mean, from Maine and New Hampshire, Southern Maine and Southern New Hampshire. So, yeah. I mean, really, we were lucky that. Yeah. Hockey was good right then. Yeah. Know, a couple yeah. have come out since, so we're optimistic, you know, that blazing those kind of trails gives kids hope to stay engaged and then they hope for the best. Deb, I want you to go on the record and, and take full credit for being the one to get Brian into hockey. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I was looking for, um, Brian has an older brother who's 18 months older than him. And so they would fight nonstop, like not, you know, like brothers do just we're at each other nonstop. And so I was looking for something to make them tired. And I went to like every sport we, we looked at. They were just too young. Soccer. I mean, I mean, we looked at all the sports and none of them, they couldn't play like an organized game. And these guys played outside from the moment they woke up. So they could play soccer. They knew how to play all these sports when they were three and four because that's what they did all day. But they couldn't play in like an organized fashion. Um, but hockey, they, they let him play. So hockey had a good we signed him up and that's, we, I didn't know anything about hockey. I never watched hockey. Um, I didn't know anything about it, but I knew it was going to make him tired. So <laughs> that's, that was her goal. My goal was the NHL. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of course. Was that Brian's goal? Like when he started or was there at any point like in his childhood growing up and continuing to play where he was like, yeah, I want to make this, like I want to make the NHL. I've seen or people just ask him that. It? I just can't remember how he, how he answers. It's a good question to get him on, ask him that question when he figured it out or I, if he even had hopes for it. I mean, his goal was really to play college hockey. You know, and he. Yeah, we have like, UMO down here in BC and UNH all in this local area. So. But he wanted to be like Travis Roy. Travis Roy came through at that time. Absolutely. You know, he was yeah. a big BU fan for quite a while. Yeah. And, uh, but I, realistically, you know, I think Brian just wanted to just kept playing at the next level that he could get to just because he liked the game. And when he got to play with better kids, you know, he always had good kids around him, but 
when you go to the nationals and you play against all of those guys, you know, he just liked the challenge, but I, I can't figure out, you know, if he ever really knew, you know, I mean, but he read Travis's book 11 seconds and he, then he said, started setting goals for himself because Travis's book has, you know, like, you know, you set yourself, you set goals and stuff. So right. Short term achievable short goals. Term and, goals. Yeah. So it's hard to say when he had, you know, he's always had a Joe Sackett jersey list like every other kid, you know, Ray Bork pictures, Bobby Orr and that kind of stuff. So he always had those dreams of, a, of being a Bruin, but um, I don't know if he had a real knowledge of it because we certainly didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Was there like an aha moment for you guys, though, once it got to like a certain point where you're like, he's going to make like he's he's going to play in the NHL? Well, we had. Um, a lot of the NHL teams during the draft, his draft year when he was 17, came to our house to interview him. So um, how All many right, teams step, do you think? Step back a couple that? of years before oh. that, when we went to this travel team out of New Hampshire, I met with the guy that ran it and asked him, am I wasting my time? Because we drive by a rink to come this 45 minutes away to practice every day. And he goes, I can't tell you till after puberty. So there had been like four, he was 14 or 15 at that time when he called me at work and said, uh, yep, Pete, he's going to be good. And the calls are going to start coming. So I guess that's the aha moment when he says, your phone's going to start ringing and different advisors or agents were calling. I think it was 15 or 16 or 17, right in that, I want to say 16 year old time frame, where once they shouted showing interest and um, it was like, hmm. That's when I started going on to NHL websites and saying, well, Brian's 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 I can see it now. And maybe that's why they think they can make something out of him. I guess that would have been it right there. Well, for me, it wasn't until they all started coming to our house to interview him. So <laughs> That was a neat process. <laughs> yeah. That, that was, was like, a little surreal. That was like, yeah. wow. And yeah. like, what do you have to do as a parent for that? Like, are you like cleaning your house and you have to order food in and you're like nervous and you're like prepping Brian for answers. Like, how do you, how as a parent are you like provide it? Like, what is that experience? Cause like, we don't know. We've never had a scout come to our house, you know? Well, you just, he, it was just one of those things where it was like the process. Like he warned me they'd call, then they called, they wanted to meet him. Um, Did you ever prep him? I never prepped him for yeah. any questions or anything. Yeah. I just prepared some meals and <laughs> had healthy food here. Well, I'm, I'm a registered dietitian anyway. So, you know, um, but they yeah. just, they wanted to make their pitch and many of them were very similar. And you just, it's like picking somebody to buy a house from you. Like you you're picking a guy that's going to represent you in the right way. And he had a lot of great people he met and it was not easy decisions, you know, NHL teams we're talking about. Oh, I thought we were talking about the agents. That's no. when, when the agents well, started calling. Right. And, uh, uh, oh my god and then right. then the, shortly thereafter he went to the combine when he for the draft so that was kind of like he might get drafted and we saw him when he was playing juniors he gave up his soft senior in high school and played for an east coast junior team and um i just saw him on the draft list like the prospects u.s born prospects so that kind of made it more real you know yeah and uh, right. the next thing you know he goes to the combine and then he got interviewed there and then some people sent their reps here to get more one-on-ones, I guess, with them, trying to mm -hmm. assess his personality. So yeah, said and that. all the while, like you guys are working job, like you're working yeah. and you've got other kids and like all of this is happening. What is that like? That was a crazy year. That was a crazy year for sure. Well, yeah, but we, we didn't know, we weren't like waiting for it. We didn't know it was going to happen until it already happened. Now, you know, we were just in the middle of it. Because Brian was a senior in high school and he had already committed to Boston College, thankfully. So we were done with that process. But then um, it was, it was, I don't know. I mean, I, I think back to that and think, I don't know how we did all that, you know. Well, we didn't have to do too much, to be honest with you. It all just happens around us. You know, the hard part for us was trucking him off to hockey from the time he was, you know, six years old when he started playing travel hockey till really his senior year in high school. And that means, like, the siblings are coming with, too, right? 
a lot of times, like his older brother is one of the things that made Brian successful young, chasing his older brother and all his oldest brother's friends. I mean, they were pretty good athletes and they challenged Brian to be good. You know? Our daughter got dragged, though, <laughs> to everything. Yeah, but she, I mean, she played, so of course she started playing hockey, too. But she she met a lot of little girlfriends that, you know, throughout the years. I think it was fun for her. I don't know. You know? She didn't have a choice, so yeah. <laughs> it just became her life. Yeah. yeah she, That's I'd funny. be interested to get her perspective on what she went through. It's a yeah. balance and you got to fit every kid's different and you it's just another decision parents have to make, which we got lucky. Yeah. We never pushed Brian at all. He led the way. Don't you think? I mean, he. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was what was a little different with him uh, for me anyway. Yeah. You know, he he'd wake me up to bring him to hockey at four in the morning. Oh, so we just like it. We just love playing the game. You know? Yeah. Which, which maybe is a sign, but I didn't pick up on it then. You know what I mean? I had no idea. I just knew we had to keep pursuing it and just doing what we could do to put him in the right situation. So yeah. what advice do you then have for other hockey parents? Maybe their goal isn't for their son or daughter to make it to a professional league, but like from your own experience and having to sort of navigate this on your own, what would you say? I like tell a lot of guys, you just got to read the kid. And if he really likes what he's doing, try to put him in the best situation. You know, it does take some sacrifice to truck him to different places to play hockey. You know, and there's a probably a, a – all right? I don't know. It's okay. Um, it's just a tough call to make when you push him too hard. Even my dad said, Pete, you're working Brian too hard on this. You, you know, he's traveling too much. He thought it was the wrong thing to do. A little bit. I said, well, you have to – he didn't get – mad at me or anything but he did have that concern that because he's a big skier snowmobile and stuff and we had to give all that stuff up because we were going from one rank to another so he's wondering if that was the right thing you know <coughs> all i can say is we roll the dice and it just kept playing listening to people that told us where we should go and what we should do and it turned out good and uh all the different coaches he had turned out good <coughs> because they all worked on different things you know right right do you think that there was a part in, you know, a, something that you had done where you were like, okay, well, maybe that shouldn't have been, you know, that step shouldn't have happened just yet or, or anything that could have been a better thing to do that in your opinion um, that maybe, because I know there's a lot of people right now that are trying to, to navigate their, their child's playing career and it's like, it's, I mean, either way, if you go either way, it could work out, but is there something that you would say would be better? Well, obviously it turned out successful for us. So I'd say, I guess right each time, you know, but I'll just ask if there were places along decisions we could have done differently to be, even be better than a situation right uh, now. Yeah. A few. Uh, I have an experienced agent, I guess, would be one of the things right. that, uh, you know. But we had, our first agent was kind of new, new to the club, but he was trying to get us into college, which he's fairly successful. He was comfortable in that arena. He was new to the NHL. So uh, that would have been one, but it worked out great. Ended up working out great. The other one was when we jumped out of our little local youth organization here to go to like a a, a new well, it was in the Renegades, but it was a make made up team of guys that wanted to go play in Massachusetts against kids. He was trying to take the best kids off all the different organizations. He got about half of them. That was a risky move, you know. Yeah. Um, we went there just again. We didn't know anything. We just wanted Brian playing hockey, so it was yeah. like we were rolling the dice. This might not get him to the NHL. That just wasn't even in the. That was right. done. It was just more or less. I like watching him play hockey, you know. And when you like little league, you play little league, and you get to all stars where all the good kids get together, you know, and play other good kids. You know, all nine people can hit the ball. It's just fun to watch. It's right. kind of competitive and travel hockey was like that. Still is. Yeah. Still is. So I'll go to the ring every now and then and watch a squirt game, and it's pretty exciting. Yeah. 
what are you guys like now as parents who go and watch him play? Like, what are you like in the stands? Like, are you screaming and hollering? Do you make a sign? Are you like super relaxed? Like, what's, are you stressed out and pacing? Like, what are you guys like? <laughs> no, I was never really too bad, too stressed out a parent, you know? And it's still now, you just watch the games now and there's not, nothing you can really do. Yeah, I don't see that. I get a little, often. no, but you get a little stressed out when you play a certain couple teams, you know, like mm. the Capitals say <laughs> right now, you know, like people yeah. that want to injure my son, you know, I, as a hockey mom, you still take every hit that they get, even though oh, yeah, this she level. gets nervous. Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, there's a few players, there's a few teams that I get nervous about. But so then do you not know. watch those or do you just watch? Oh, no, the things I, I watch. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I take their number for someday. <laughs> <laughs> I have a show. I have, I have a show. Listen, I want to golf in front of me one day. But. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Listen, I I wouldn't cross either of you, especially you, Deb. <laughs> I, I, I uh, don't mess with a hockey mom. That's like not, no, 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 no. <laughs> Brian has like two seats in Pittsburgh that he gets at. So we, when we go, we usually sit in those seats. Um, yep. And that's when you can meet some of the families because it's a little family section. So that's, that's really fun. Who, are, who do you guys sit with? Who's around you? Well, uh, Sydney Crosby's parents are usually behind us. They go to a lot of games. Trina and Troy, um, yeah. Um, all over the years, always a different group of parents that would go to regularly the games. It's not like college where they'd all go and you'd spend the whole weekend. But we'll always run in. Like this year, I went to a game and McGinn's dad was there. Well, uh, Sally Gensel, though, you know, what I see. Yeah. Um, um, oh, who else was there? We haven't gone to many games this year. Yeah. We're going to go out this next weekend and probably pop down to a game. But backward, when we were in the playoffs, the playoffs, Stanley Cup run, more people would show up and you'd get everybody in there. But it's What's pretty that like? Overall, you know? Nobody <clears throat> nobody yells or really anything, right? I mean, uh, it's... It's like um, the most quiet section in the whole... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No one's trying to stand out, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. I have to take that back. When the first Stanley Cup final game, when Brian ended up scoring the first goal, my son and daughter and I were there and we screamed so loud because never in a million years would I have written that script that he would score a goal. Uh, and we were screaming so loud for so long that people started turning around looking at us because we were literally flipping out of our mind. It was so crazy. And people are high-fiving us from all over. You know, it was it was really crazy. So I that's the only time that I've ever really screamed at a game. So. That's, good. that's funny. Do you guys have any um, game day traditions or superstitions? Um, yes. Ooh. <laughs> Very yeah. matter of fact. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we kind of do, you know. We really, at least I do. I always try to do the same things. And you do. You know, I my buddies come over. They got to sit in the right seats. Oh yeah, yeah. We lose at Venice for a couple of weeks. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Well, in San Jose, I keep, was so sick when we lost Game Five. I didn't even go to Game Six when they won. I came home to watch with my my buddies because I'm very superstitious. That you know. Ryan's up three games to nothing in his first Stanley Cup finals. And now that it's 3-2 going to San Jose, yikes. We don't want to be on a team that loses a 3-0. <laughs> but uh, that turned out all right. Debbie was there, my daughter, my sister, my, uh, John, my son. Our son, John. So yeah. they had a good time. I yeah. went out for the parade. Yeah. But, yeah, so there's little superstitions, you know. Even now, like Brian calls me before games most of the time on his way down to the games. And uh, I don't know if he – does it on purpose or that's he's kind of he's a ritual type of guy too and um when i'm out there i always go down to the games with him at four and then go have a few beers in the local bars the Penns fans are a riot they're they they're so much amazing fun. fans they are really amazing yeah yeah tell us more about the fans what are they like 
We I haven't been to a Penguins game at, in Pitt, so. I think they're the best. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we haven't been to every, you know, to, on every team, so we don't know. But, you know, it's just friendly down there. Uh, the bars, just they're loaded up. It's like going to down, down, downtown Boston, going to the fours and those places, too. It's the same way. They're just into the game. You know what I mean? They're into they're all, all geared up with the jerseys and stuff. I always track for Brian jerseys, you know. A lot of 87s and 71s, and you know. But every now and then I'll see a Dumo jersey walking around, take a picture for his wife. We track that. <laughs> their, their fans are so amazing that I remember when we went to that game five, no, or or a game before that. Of the, was that the first Stanley Cup? Yeah. Um, my parents came down. Your dad came down. And we made my dad wait outside because we wanted to go into the rink and go into the store. So my mother wanted to buy a bunch of stuff. So we left my father outside. And I thought he was going to be mad because we were in there a long time. We come out of the store. My dad's taking pictures, selfies <laughs> with everyone. He's waving to people. Somehow people found out that he was Brian's grandfather. And he had the time of his life. These Penguins fans are so amazing. They made my dad feel like he was, you know, such a hero that day. It was amazing. I think it was like one of the best days for yeah, him. That's pretty cool. It was so cool. I thought he was going to be mad that we were in the store that long. <laughs> he's taking pictures. He's <laughs> waving to people. He's doing interviews. He's out there and having that, the time. That's like, because when I go to these bars, they don't know who I am. I don't go there enough. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just like to drink with them. And, I have a good time. They never know who I am. And it, that's how fun they are, you know, so, and fun. to a strangers. That's what you can tell. I think yeah. that's part of the hockey world too. Cause like I've had similar experiences where I've gone to hockey bars and not known anybody and they just embrace you. Know, you just start talking about your team yeah. and you find commonality and you just, it's not weird or strange. So I think that's probably why when I saw you guys, I was like, oh, this isn't <laughs> weird. They're hockey people. So this isn't strange to just you start talking to about. something to talk about. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, oh, what would you guys say is your proudest um, hockey moment as, as parents? Or maybe like most memorable. I'm sure you're really proud of him and like all the different milestones he's, he's accomplished. And, you know, obviously – when you win the Stanley Cup, I was very proud when he got it back here to, to Oh, Bennifer. yeah, that's a good one. I mean, and I, I got to bring it to with him to some of the places I hang out, you know what I mean? And we built time in his the schedule to get it to the locals around here that are forever appreciative of that. So, you know, to, he, he, he thinks of other people, and I guess that, that first year with the Stanley Cup where he spent the whole day. I yeah. Mean, he, he was so exhausted. unselfish. I mean, he was so unselfish. Some of the local communities helped too. Like one of the restaurants put on a great feed, but Ryan was able to invite every coach yeah. from the time he was a Mike coach York from BC came and yeah. got their little uh, couple hours in that small seafood restaurant. You could see he was seafood. <laughs> Throw him <laughs> a plug. But um, yeah, uh, it's though those are the kind of things that that make me the most proud is that when he, when he gives back to the community, he takes the time to, to do those little things, you know, and when the next year, when we run it, we have to stay in Boston with it, which is fine. But he spent the day like two hours, three hours at Spalding rehab, you know, it makes me as a dad proud that he'll, he'll think of those kind of things and do those. A lot of hockey players do obviously, but yeah, uh, he's one of them. So I was proud of that. Yeah. I, I agree that for that first, the first Stanley cup, day was like such an amazing day for everyone and he just went a hundred miles an hour and was so unselfish and it was it was an amazing day I think that is definitely one of my proudest moments for what of watching him yeah yep I can see why did you did either one of you get to eat or drink anything out of the cup oh yes <laughs> yeah we all drank out of the cup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We didn't eat anything. No, we didn't put that, any food in We there. didn't do any food. Um, okay. <laughs> just drank. A couple of babies went in there. A couple of puppies. You know, <laughs> Our dogs went in there. Yeah. <laughs> They're uh, yeah, we had a picture of them right behind us. Right when, we? They were right, when we had the cup in this room behind us for a little while. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. 
But it was oh, so great. exciting to watch the reaction of the people when they got, got a chance to get around. That it was fun. That parade must have been wild. Yeah. It is that was wild. Cool. Right <laughs> Uh, we got to be in both parades with Brian. They invite the families and they oh, put cool. like two players in um, the back of a truck. Um, and it was so fun. Uh, both times we, uh, we just had a blast for sure. And the fans are crazy. Like, I mean, I just, I couldn't get over how many there were. They were hanging out of buildings and parking garages. And I've never seen anything like it. It was amazing. That's great. And I'm sure like overwhelming too, because you're like going and like everyone's just surrounding you and all eyes are on you and you're going down and it's like I would be oh, the parade like, was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And you're like, this is for my son. And well, like a bunch <laughs> of other people. But like these people are here for him. Like that I how do you even comprehend that as a parent? Well, you're here for part of them, right? Yeah. I mean you yeah. just felt like we were part of the team, though. You know what I mean? It was, it was just such a big group of us that, you know, well, like I said, as the playoffs runs kept going, the group get tighter and tighter, you know? And it was kind of fun to celebrate with all of them guys. You don't really get to see many of the families um, during the regular season, but when you go into a playoff, a lot of them go to the playoff games. You know, like, say, the last one, for sure, you know? So you get to meet them, and, and then it becomes funner for – for us parents, because you don't get to really know the rest of the parents that much. You know, it's not like college or anything like that. So. I mean, you fly into Pittsburgh and see two games in a row during the playoffs because you play two at home and two away. So it makes it worth the whole trip. So you see a few more people. No, He's going to say he gets to go on a dad's trip. That's <laughs> where he was going. Tell us about your favorite dad's trip. Obviously, the filtered version of your favorite dad's trip. No, nah, the dad's trip's pretty good with the Penguins, so. though. You know, we did give her the, a filtered version of a dad, your favorite moment on a dad's trip. Yeah. Well, it had to be the first one <clears throat> when uh, we just got invited. We went out to Pittsburgh on a Wednesday, watched the game, or, or Tuesday, watched the game, and flew with the team Wednesday till Monday. Went to Fort Lauderdale. First, we went to Carolina, played a game there, then went to Fort Lauderdale. And they did a great job with us there. All the dads were really taken, taken well care of. And, you know, that's when you really got long time to get to know the different dads and hear the stories so that was very fun and then we hadn't seen brian that much either so i got to spend some time with him you know right and you, you know, weren't sit. wanting for food or drinks right oh no no no, no. they I kept you well fed and really well hydrated no nope. uh, yeah again you got to provide yep. the advice not, not to forget to take naps with the kids you know they they have their pregame breakfast and their skate and their lunch and they take a nap First road trip, we went to the bar a little too quick. You didn't nap because then you take the bus to the rink, and then there's food and drink there. And then next, you know, it's like eleven o'clock at night. You're on the plane having a couple of beers while you fly to the next place. So you need a nap in there. Yes, good advice. Good advice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that advice if I ever get to go on a mom's trip. That's Some fun. teams, you know, swap off every other year, and some teams right. don't. And I, I haven't been lucky enough in the 10 years to go on one, but hopefully before Brian retires, he's going to go to a team that has one. So <laughs> right. I'm going to make him stay until he, he has a team that takes him on the strip. Exactly. So. I just wanted to see if either one of you had a, like a bucket list arena to go and, and watch Brian play in. Yes. That's my, that's my list is to go to all of them. That's my bucket list is to go to all of them. And I, I've been to, I think I've got, I've been to 12 now. So I still have 20 left. Um, but I definitely want to do like the whole Canadian swing. Um, yeah, I haven't been to, I've only been to Montreal in, in uh, Canada. So Ooh. I'd like to definitely do the, you know, some of the new rings, Las Vegas. I definitely want to get there. That's I want to awesome. get to all of them. So I really do need a mom's trip to help with a little bit of that. You do, you do. <laughs> I've been to 10 or 12 of them now, so it's worked out pretty good. I think you've probably been more than that. Well, there's been five dad trips, so we went to two games. And then, mm -hmm. and then you've been to other ranks that others, aren't yeah. You're probably at, it's not his bucket list, so he's probably at like 18. <laughs> I can't see one that stands out more than another to me. Like, I have to go there. 
we went to Montreal for the draft. So we've been in that rank and up in that area. That's really nice. Mm-hmm. Toronto's probably psychotic too. So that'd be a fun place to go. Who is your ultimate hunk of hockey? <laughs> well, I think it would be creepy to say my son, don't you? So. <laughs> So I guess I'd have to go age appropriate and say like Mario Lemieux or something like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like that. How about you? <laughs> oh, I'm, I gotta go with Bobby Orr, but if you want, you know, are we talking all time or all, just yeah. Murray? all time? All yeah. time. Bobby Orr. I grew up a Bruins fan watching him play when I was little. Yeah. He made hockey for me. He's why I played a little hockey, not like that for Brian, but <laughs> solid choices. <laughs> all right and who is your favorite hockey lady what are you gonna say i ain't telling you <laughs> i'd have to go with my daughter who played <laughs> so how about Good you answer. megan megan duggan she was played for team usa for several years her uncle uh worked with me at the navy yard so i've been following her a lot through him you know so it's pretty cool awesome. to be connected you know what i mean now Cause that's what I'm trying to do is connect people with Brian. You get connected with hockey, then you fall in love with it and to be connected with her kind of through him. It was fun. It was, it, it was really fun. All right. We <laughs> ask everybody this, as you know, Pete, do you have a Sidney Crosby story? We have a, a couple, but they're all, they're, there's n- they're all good ones. They're all just awesome times with him. He's amazing. Of course. Yeah, he came to Brian's wedding. They're oh, right. always so, good stories. Yeah. 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 Cause he's a good guy. So, you know, I have to explain that to Boston fans. That want to rock <laughs> that. You know, he's a good guy. Um, well, my story is um, I think one of the first times I really saw him in action, you know, just as a regular person was um, we, when we did our first stadium series game that we went to, which was in Philly and oh. we were all getting they brought the families on a bus. And so we were getting back on a bus and I think it was Ron Hainsey's um, son was there because he had just been traded to the Penguins and Sydney was in front of him and he turned around and he introduced himself to the young boy and was asking him a whole bunch of questions and, you know, really went out of his way to make him feel comfortable and welcome him to you know the penguins organization and i was just so impressed with how he really went out of his way to just like welcome this little young boy uh, that day so that's my favorite story mm-hmm. no that goes right in line with the stories i hear about it is when guys do get traded sydney is the guy that calls them first you know let, talks to them directly as a captain of the team it's kind of what a captain should do i don't know if every all of them do it or not but he definitely does, you know, like on the dad strip, he just organizes things, you know, has a setup, a great bar down in Miami, uh, you know, in Fort Lauderdale, you know, mm-hmm. Brian dragged me out, so Sid set us up in another bar, we get in there, and it was all set up for us, it was awesome. I mean, Not if Sid night. sets it up, you gotta go, you gotta get up <laughs> out of bed, and you gotta go, right? <laughs> well, you don't Brian, miss Brian, that! Brian, so Brian was going, he just wanted to know if I wanted to go <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, wow. That's, that's incredible. That's awesome stories. Yeah. Thanks, guys, so much for <laughs> taking the time to talk to us and sharing your experience. I think it's a unique perspective that we um, haven't been able to share with everybody who listens. And um, I think you really offered a different look at what being in hockey is like. Well, that's why I like listening to your podcast a couple I did because you guys watch the games and give us your perspective. And it isn't from somebody who's played the game, who, you know, which is great too. Don't get me wrong, but it's just good to hear different people that like the game talk about it, you know, and yeah. see how you saw a play versus how a, a player would see a play, you know. So it's interesting. And yeah. put the female aspect on it, that's even different. We so appreciate you guys. Thank you so right. much. Uh, Thank you for right. having us. <laughs> Thanks for coming over to our House of Hockey podcast and hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media. Just look for House of Hockey podcast. We'll be back next week.